All right. In the other two videos, we talked about strike price shift differential and looking at the bid ask spread and trying to determine if an option qualifies as a decent option to trade. Um, but in the middle of the day, how do we know which option to choose quickly? How can we work through this to very quickly determine the right option to trade? Your trading plan will help guide you on this. So first, it, it will help if you understand how these options prices are going to move. Things that are in the money are going to move very much like stock is going to move. So with that in mind, if you're going to trade an option on the idea of, say, a small stock move, you would want that option to price just like the stock is going to price. Every penny the stock moves, the option is going to move, and it wouldn't take very much movement for your option to see value, and you could get out of it quick. That would be a completely different kind of trade if you are out of the money and the stock moves very small amounts, right? So first, what do you think the stock price is going to do? Is this a scalp? You think the stock price might move, you know, a tenth of a percent, and you're just going to get in and get out? You're probably going to want to trade in the money instead of out of the money. And then the next thing is, how long are you going to hold it? Do you really expect to hold this for more than one day, maybe multiple days? Um, or what if you're anticipating the stock price is going to make a big move and you want to ride it through that whole move? Those are the things you need to think about and put your trade plan together long before it's actually time to trade. Right, So the idea behind this is you want to be prepared for these different kind of trades. So if we go out to the chart here and we think about the kind of trades that we could do, take a look at yesterday's price action for an example. If we were getting ready to trade this, um, let's kind of start halfway through the day, right? It's been moving. Maybe we think it's going to break this Globex low and continue to go lower. And we don't exactly know how much farther it's going to go, but our plan here isn't for just a small move in the market. We could consider trading an out-of-the-money option in this point. But if we were looking at an earlier trade on the day, say here for an example, where we have a low on the day's session and we're thinking it might reject across these highs and we just want to trade it from this rejection back down to this low, well, that's a, a small move in the market. We might want to trade an in-the-money option for that. What you want to do is take the time to build a trade plan for a small stock move and then take the time to build a trade plan for a potential bigger move. Now, obviously, we don't know if it's going to make a big move like this or not. But you do already know what your plan is, right? What you believe the market's going to do before you ever get in it. You think it's going to go up. You think it's going to go down. Well, where's the closest resistance point? Do you really believe that you can get past that resistance point? And then by how far? So... Once you've got an idea of these different strategies, you want to start putting them together. This way, when it's time to take the trade and you go into the options chain, you've got plan A or plan B ready to go, and you can immediately focus on those options and not spend time looking at a bunch of other things. One of the reasons for this video is somebody recently said 
that they got hurt trading an out of the money option because it was the only thing that they could afford to trade and it just it never really priced well even though the stock moved in their direction this is often a problem with the very expensive things like the SPX you can see how these really far out of the money options are still $1500 i mean that that's expensive so you're looking at something like this you know it's $1,490 to buy this very far out of the money call. And if that's not cheap enough and you want to go even farther out, you're getting farther and farther away from the money. So now I turned on 100 strikes and you can see we're really, really far out. There's very little volume, a 45 cent wide bid ask spread, and our expectation of price movement from this, how much money these options could make, is very little. We would need an extreme move in price for this to monetize enough to actually pay us for our risk. So unless we have an expectation of the market making a very large, exaggerated move, we wouldn't want to trade these. And if these are the only ones that you can afford, this isn't the product for you to trade. That's the solution. You just don't trade this. It's expensive. Sure, you can go far enough out to find something cheap enough for you to actually afford to buy it, but that's a bad option and you don't want to buy that option. You don't want to buy this unless you really have that expectation of a big move. So what do you have to what you have to do at that point is either trade a spread. You can still trade the SPX, but maybe you trade a debit spread, and now you can limit your risk, and it can fit something that might be affordable for you. Or you literally just have to go trade something else, like the SPY instead of the SPX. These options are much cheaper. Right? You can see how we're still relatively close to the money, 4 or $5 out. And they're not thousands of dollars a piece. So, yes, you can trade out of the money options. No, there's nothing wrong with them. It just has to fit your expectation of the stock movement. So, when you're coming in and you're trying to choose which option to trade, your plan should already guide you to the area that you want to be looking at. You're either going to be slightly out of the money slightly in the money or near the money, right? That, that's your three spots. The ones that are in the money are going to move very much like stock. And the ones that are out of the money are going to really need the Greeks to influence them. And then the ones near the money, they get a little bit of that stock and a little bit of that Greek. In the previous two videos, I talked about that strike price shift differential. Well, we can do that same thing to help develop our trade plan. So even now with the market closed and it's a weekend, I can come in and look at these and I can kind of ask a question, a little bit basic maybe, but I can ask a question that says, if I trade the out of the money option and I get a $2 move, how much money would I get? So we can look at, say, this 400 strike and we'll go to 398. If I bought the 400 strike and I paid 59 cents for it, and then we get a $2 move, I could sell it for about 89 cents. So I make 30 cents there. That's a $2 move. I make 30 cents. And it cost me 60 cents. Basically, let's just round up. It cost me 60 cents to get in. I could trade at the money, the 387. This one's going to cost me $466 to get in, but in a $2 move, I could sell it for $566. Again, I'm just using simple numbers. That's a $2 move, and I made it a dollar in, in price, right? I made a dollar profit. So which one of these is better? Well, what was your game plan to begin with? How much do you really believe the stock price is going to move? Are you going to trade more than one option? Because if you're going to trade more than one option, consider trading the one that's out of the money 
right? This one that was out of the money, sure, it was 60 cents. This one was $466. I could buy, oh, I don't know, four of these, still get that $2 move in price, and it made 30 cents each, right? That's four times 30. That's a reasonably decent profit. I used less money here, and I made the same or more profit than I did here because this one would have made what a dollar and this one made a dollar 20. So, you know, trading more than one option gives you choices. You can fade the play, close some and keep some, roll some. But if you are just trading one, you really can't do anything more than manage it or close it. Can't fade it. By having this plan in place ahead of time, it can save you a lot of uh, a lot of time when it's time to get the trade. There is a third choice. I'm not exactly happy with the third choice, but a lot of traders use it, and there's nothing wrong with it. So the third choice is that you just always trade the at-the-money option. And if you think about it, it, it makes perfect sense, right? If you're just always trading that same option, one in or one out of the money, and that's your go-to, then it's always going to be your go-to. You'll know exactly what strike to trade every single time. And it won't matter if you think the stock is going to make a big move or a little move. If you're trying to scalp the trade or if you're going to take it as a swing trade, this at-the-money option is a universal application you can use it on all of those choices but trading deep in the money while it can be used for a small move or a big move for a swing trade or you know just a, a long-term buy and hold whatever you want it's universal but it has detriments to it right when you're deep in the money like that if you're trading it as a spread then you've got a short leg in the money and that can get you a sign. If you're just buying it without a spread, then sure, you get to avoid the assignment risk, but you're still deep in the money. And that means the cost is a lot higher than what you could have got out here. But there'll be uh, much less impact to the Greeks. And then you could also just always do the out of the money. And again, always isn't something that I like to do, right? I don't always want to be in the money. I don't always want to be out of the money. I want to make my decision based on what my idea of the stock movement is going to be. But the universal choice of being at the money really just eliminates all of that and helps build consistency. So depending on your account size, if these numbers are not prohibitive to you, right? If you can look at the at the money cost and it's not taking up, say, half of your account and in, in one option, then you know maybe that's a, just a better way to go. And then as you get more experience and you've got some um, real life examples underneath your belt, you could choose at that point to start going just a little out of the money or a little in the money from time to time, once in a while, as you slowly adapt and grow and get better at what you do, right? But really try to start out with having multiple strategies for multiple situations and use the strike price shift differential that I talked about in the other two videos to help you kind of gauge what outcome you could potentially get. And when it comes to building the plan itself, looking at the stock chart alone, kind of consider what kind of trades are you really doing? Are you a scalper? Because I, I know that a lot of people like to just get 20 or 30, maybe 50 cents in a spy move and close it, right? They get in, it moves 50 cents, they close it. Well, those people are going to want to trade deep in the money options so that they avoid a lot of the slippage, they get uh, almost no impact from the Greeks, and they get a really good dollar-for-dollar -dollar move or 
penny for penny move in the underlying market. That's not a bad way to go. But if you're taking more of a um, measured move approach, right? Say it's a head and shoulders or a double top and you can measure it out and you know exactly how far the next turning point is and at the money or an out of the money option really might be the way to go. So plan those out in advance. Look them over, make the decision about which one really suits your needs and then put that plan together, have it ready to go. And on the day that it's time to trade, you're able to come in, go right to the options chain and look right into the area that is gonna match what you're looking for, that you'll be right there out of the money, near the money or completely in the money, right? That's how you quickly make that decision in the middle of the day when it's time to get a trade. It's because you've already done all the work in advance long before it was time to put the trade on.